Okay, so the next thing we want to talk about with the story elements is point of view and how point of view will affect understanding of the story. Point of view is very simply the way a story is told. Okay? It's important to remember that all stories are told from a point of view and the experiences of the person telling the story or the character telling the story will determine how the story is told. So if a person in a gorilla suit walked into this room, walked around the back and walked out, every single one of you would have a different story about what happened based on your own point of view. Some of you may be afraid of gorillas. Some of you may be, think it's hilarious. Some of you may know the person in the gorilla suit. In other words, you all have different experiences coming to the telling of that story. Now, there are different types of point of view. The first one is objective. Objective point of view is where the author simply reports the facts. This is where we have um, objective point of views. We see it, or we hope to see it, in like our news media. The news anchorman comes on and he simply reports the facts of the story. They don't put any of their own opinion into it. Okay? We have a type of point of view called third person. The third person is where the narrator who tells the story does not participate in the story, but he can tell the reader everything we need to know from how the characters act to what the characters say to how the characters feel. It's being told in third person. We read a lot of books that are written in third person. Okay? This word is omniscient. Everybody look at the word. Let's say the word together. Omniscient. Everyone say it. Omniscient. Excellent. An omniscient point of view is where the narrator knows everything. They are all knowing. They are not one of the characters, but they know everything about everything in the story, including what the characters are thinking omniscient the last point of view that we're going to learn about is first person when Zachary Beaver came to town is a first person novel so is the true confessions of Charlotte Doyle so is the outsiders all of them are first person stories because one of the main characters is telling the story from their point of view if Johnny had told the story of the Outsiders or Derry had told the story of the Outsiders, we would have a very different book than the one told by Pony Boy. Okay? Now, we have a new name, our new vocabulary word to learn. Actually, we have two of them. The first one is the protagonist. Everybody say protagonist. Protagonist is the character which is central to the story with all major events having some importance to this character. In other words, it is the main character in the story. Harry Potter is the protagonist. Katniss is the protagonist. Bruno and Schmoll are equal protagonists, but Bruno um, is the main protagonist in The Boy in Striped Pajamas. Charlotte is the protagonist in The True Confessions of Charlotte Doyle. Pony Boy is the protagonist in The Outsiders. Okay? Do you remember the books you read in sixth grade? Who was the protagonist of Hatchet? Who was the main character? Do you remember? His name was Brian. Ah, yeah. Who was the protagonist in Holes? Stanley Yelnats. Stanley Yelnats was the protagonist in the story Holes. Okay. 
the opposer of the main character is the antagonist. Say antagonist. The antagonist opposes the main character. This can be another person, another character, or it can be a situation, or it can be an object. The antagonist is not always a character. In The Boy in the Striped Pajamas, the antagonist, we think, is Lieutenant Coulter, but it's not really. The antagonist is the persecution of the Jews keeping the two boys apart. It's a situation. Okay, but in the True Confessions of Charlotte Doyle, the antagonist of Charlotte is clearly Captain Jaggery. So sometimes it's a character, sometimes it's a situation. In order for a story to seem real, the characters must seem real. Would you agree with that statement? We have to be able to relate or connect to the characters. So developing characterization, it's the information that the author gives the readers about the characters. So when we talk about characters, we no longer just write about what they look like. We now also have to consider other things. So physical appearance is one. What the character thinks, feels, and dreams is another. What a character does or does not do, their actions. What others say about them or how others react to them. So we can learn an awful lot about Pony Boy by the actions that he takes. We learn what kind of a person he was. We learned what he was willing to stand up for. We learned what he was willing to fight for by his actions. <clears throat>